So it hasn't been too long since creative AI image upscalers have been around. Uh, starting with Magnific, these of course are image upscalers that will take creative liberties while enlarging your images. At this point, I think most AI image generators have a flavor of creative upscaling. Leonardo has their universal upscaler, Midjourney has one, and of course there is the standalone OG version, Magnific. What I really appreciate about every creative upscaler is that they all do interesting and unique things. That said, it wasn't long before the question came up, how long will it be before we get creative AI upscaling for video? Well, now, and it's really cool. Little bit of groundwork first, so let's dive in. Before we get to creative AI video upscaling, I do just wanna to briefly touch on Kling because new information has come to light. Super briefly, in case you missed it, Kling is a new AI video generator that is pretty much on a Sora level and it's being rolled out for use right now. Bit of an asterisk there, I'll talk about that in one second, followed by another asterisk which appears toward the end of this segment. Juni Lau on X points out that the company behind Kling is the biggest competitor to TikTok in China. Each video has a consistent length of five seconds with no more than three minutes of generation time. Uh, apparently you can generate over five clips at the same time. Overall, the shots that I've seen out of Kling have been very impressive. This shot of Keith Richards playing guitar in a swamp, I mean, the prompt coherence on this is out of control. Now on the downside, Kling is only available as a mobile app. And while it has been widely reported that you have to have a Chinese phone number in order to use it, that's not entirely true because Dustin in Hollywood on Twitter and a few others with Western phone numbers did manage to get access to it. Now, Dustin did point out that he signed up like the second that he saw the announcement. So it is possible that he got in before a gate was closed down. Kling themselves do say that they are in private beta and accessible only in China. But in light of the needs of international users, their team is actively exploring ways to better serve us in the future. So are all of us who do not have access to a mobile Chinese phone number, which I do presume is most of us watching, uh, are we all locked out from being able to generate AI video at this you know, new level of quality? Well, I can't say much right now because if I look out my window, there is a lawyer with a sniper rifle and a kind of a twitchy finger and he keeps muttering, just give me a reason. I don't think he's a lawyer, but friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry, who is not afraid of sniper lawyers, I think because he's from the UK and they don't have lawyers there, they have barristers and their snipers actually shoot from the opposite side of the road. Well, he posted and while still cryptic, trust me, you won't need a Chinese phone number. You won't need Sora access. The only other thing that I can say is that you're definitely going to want to hit the subscribe button. So all that out of the way, I'm going to collect some of the available cling footage and then we're going to take that over to see how it looks when we run it through a creative AI video upscaler. But first, we're going to check in with our friends at LTX Studio. LTX Studio, who I am a big fan of and are sponsoring today's video, have released a new feature called Visions. This new feature allows you to generate an output using anything from a fully edited script to a creative brief, or you can even just start with a totally blank canvas. They recently went over the suite of new features at a live event in London that is linked down below if you wanna check it out. So aside from those three entry points in order to generate your story, LTX Studio also introduced a style reference feature in which, as the name implies, you'll be able to provide your project with an image reference that will holistically influence the aesthetic of your output, which is really awesome. I mean, obviously LTX Studio has a number of kind of preset templated looks, but now that we have style reference, you'll really be able to individualize your project. Now here's an interesting new feature that I really haven't seen anyone else do. Uh, taking just our quick output here of where are you scruffy? It's kind of an animated claymation thing about a lost puppy. What can I say? There has been a lot of Bluey being watched at the house. So aside from the host of other features available to us on LTX Studio, including uh, being able to change the camera angle of any one particular shot, we're now also able to generate our project as a pitch deck. This contains everything from our characters to a mood board to a scene by scene breakdown of our project. That's not enough. At the London event, they also unveiled their new on-platform video upscaler. Overall, LTX Studio, and more importantly, the team behind LTX Studio, uh, and yeah, this isn't a talking point. This is something that I'm genuinely saying. 
they're really committed to bringing creatives and filmmakers all the tools that they need to bring their stories and visions to life. In fact, at the London event, there's a segment featuring behind the scenes footage from three productions that they did that brought and combined LTX Studio projects into, you know, an actual shoot. If you don't already have access to LTX Studio, uh, definitely sign up for the wait list. That link is down below. You can also check out the video to the London event that is also linked below. And I have an upcoming video with LTX Studios or depending on when you're watching this, it, it's probably out already. But that features a world-class musician coming down to Studio A, and we're going to generate up a music video for a completely improvised piece. I'll have it linked at the end of this video and down below once it releases. Moving on, Crea.ai have released their Creative AI Video Upscaler. Now, a few videos back, we looked at Crea's AI Video Generator, which I thought did some really kind of cool and interesting things. But this new AI video enhancer, in my opinion, I think this is going to be like standard operating workflow for AI videos going forward. So as a note, and because I don't want to surprise anyone, this is only available if you are on the max plan, the $60 a month plan, which look, I know is a lot. I mean, on the plus side, apparently uh, they're not enforcing compute limits for Crea Max users right now. So it's basically like $60 for unlimited usage for the time being. And look, like anything, I think that if you wait long enough, you know, the price will eventually come down. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at it because it's super impressive. So taking this cling output of a sci-fi woman walking through a pool of water in like an abandoned warehouse, not exactly sure where this shot's headed, but dragging it into the Crea Enhance module, uh, you'll see here that we can upscale it up to 1.5K. But here's where things get interesting is that we have this settings slider here. Crea does do this neat thing where it actually analyzes analyzes your video and will actually give you a prompt so you don't actually have to manually type one in. You can modify it if you would like though. From there, you have a dropdown of three different styles, a cinematic, render, and animation. And finally, from there, we have sliders for AI strength and AI resemblance. And so running it with the cinematic preset uh, gives us this. Uh, yeah, that's fairly significant. And when you punch in, you can really see the heavy lifting that Crea is doing here. I mean, obviously this is the original and then the enhanced version. Uh, yeah, that is super crazy. The sliders definitely do have an effect, uh, you know, as I'm always going to do, I cranked up AI strength to maximum and uh, we ended up with this as the result. Um, again, very, very impressive. And when you're super zoomed in, you do see a little bit of, you know, shifting and morphing. Uh, that said, if you're actually, you know, zoomed out a ways, I, I don't think you really notice quite as much. Uh, we're going to circle back because I've got another trick on this coming up in just a minute. Render gave us this as a look. I think that still kind of leans into the cinematic style. And finally, under animation, we end up with, you know, obviously an animated look. Uh, now, personally, I think, well, I do think that this looks cool. This is not where I think the animation preset that really flies. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Now, I do want to point out that this is still a tool that is very much based in garbage in, garbage out. Take, for example, this shot of this robot guy walking down the street away from fires that he very clearly caused. Uh, you know, he's got a bit of that AI, you know, weightlessness, ice skating kind of walk to him. Additionally, these bystanders over here, they don't seem too concerned about the uh, giant killer robot behind them. So running the animation preset over this, you know, we do get a lot of additional details in the buildings, uh, in the fire, but it doesn't really do anything in terms of the actual walking motion. We're still getting a little bit of that slide there. But when you feed it a decent input, yeah, the results are pretty remarkable. Let me punch in on this guy so you can really see how much we're adding here. Um, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty crazy. And again, you probably will have to play around with the strength and resemblance sliders a bit uh, to find that sweet spot. Here's another example of our lumberjack uh, fighter pilot. For example, in this you know, very clearly homage to Gladiator shot, um, when I was taking things up a little too high, it, it looks good, don't get me wrong, but you know the hands, tend to look a little bit too veiny. The colors feel a little bit too on the HDR side. It ended up taking me a few more generations before I found the sweet spot, which was this one, where I felt because the shot was pretty good to begin with that, you know, this just adds that little extra 10% that really helps sell it. Sliding back over to animation to show you where I think this really flies. Uh, this is, this actually I know is a Dustin Hollywood output. Uh, this is, you know, obviously very, uh, you know, kids movie, 3D animated film. Running the animation preset on it though, uh, man, that, 
really kind of changes everything, doesn't it? Equally as impressive is when you run render on this, which is, you know, sort of the 3D rendering style. I mean, that's that's really good. And that's not to take anything away from the Kling model. I mean, just, the, but the, you know, obviously this creative upscaler to some pretty uh, remarkable fill in the blank details here. And if you're wondering how it looks when you provide it with actual footage as opposed to AI generated footage, uh, this is a piece of stock video that I've used in the past as an example uh, and running the animation preset, we end up with this, uh, which looks, it looks really good. Um, and just as a note, I actually used that same clip for a video that I did when Gen 1 first came out. So again, here's that same piece of footage run through Gen 1 back in March of 2023. And again, this is where we are today. So as a final sort of cherry on top, you know, if you really punch in on this footage, you do still see a little bit of like morphing and shifting. And I was wondering if you could, you know, really just kind of stamp that out by taking the whole thing through Topaz. And listen, I know Topaz is expensive. That's another $300. But on the plus side, when you buy Topaz, you do own Topaz. So just to quickly run you through the settings, I did run it uh, on the presets, both for 4K and for HD. Um, under the enhancements, I tend to use Iris a lot with AI generated video. That seems to be the one that, you know, I've kind of run through all of them. Iris does seem to be the one that works best. I also ran some stabilization on it and just let her rip. So taking a quick look, this is the Kling, you know, straight output right from Twitter, followed by the uh, Korea Creative Upscale. Again, this is the cinematic preset, followed by a Topaz Upscale of that in full HD, followed by a 4K Upscale again in Topaz. But where you start to see the real differences is when you start to punch in. I did have to eyeball these because the frame sizes are all a little bit different. So again, we have you know the original Kling output. This is the Korea Enhance. Uh, again, and we're now followed by the Topaz Full HD. I did go a little overboard with the grain there. I didn't see that until I actually zoomed in. Uh, and then finally the 4K HD with the grain turned down. So definitely let me know if you thought that there was a noticeable difference, uh, you know, taking that Korea output and then running it through Topaz. Uh, and like, I guess lastly, we'll just end up with this baby riding a bug. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is just the straight Korea one. Um, I Why would someone prompt this? I mean, honestly, why would someone prompt that. So yeah, that's today's video. Uh, I thank LTX Studio for sponsoring this video. I thank you for watching this video. Uh, and I will be seeing you very soon. I have the feeling that this is going to be a very busy week. My name is Tim.